In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. On this a second Sunday, following Pentecost, we celebrate another beautiful mystery of our faith, the promise of Jesus to be nourishment and, the, and eternal life for all who believe in him. Today we celebrate the beautiful feast of the most holy body and blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. Recognizing that we, the body of Christ, are nourished by the gift of his life in this sacrament, which promises that we will live forever in the presence of God. As we gather now to celebrate the Eucharist, the source of our life in him. Let us prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by asking God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, out of love for us, you offered your life on the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, raised from the dead in the glory of the Father, you intercede for us in his presence. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sustain us in our journey of faith. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob his statutes, and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of one bread is one, we though many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf the word of the Lord.
to eat your sacred food in peace, joy, love, and gratitude. Oh, blessed Trinity. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the Son, the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the Father has sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord.
My brothers and sisters, from childhood, I have always found the smell of freshly baked bread very comforting. You can probably tell that by my waistline. <laughs> the aroma of it makes me feel somehow at home. Perhaps it is because bread is such a staple of life. Furthermore, it is difficult to limit ourselves, oneself, to a single piece of bread fresh from the oven. It is almost as if a primal craving has been tapped into and an overpowering drive unleashed. There is another craving for bread, one that stems from stark necessity rather than simple remembered pleasure. In the very country where obesity is one of the most serious health issues, millions of our fellow Americans are chronically hungry. Most of us do not know this experience. I do not mean the uneasiness we feel when we miss a meal or two. What I'm speaking about is genuine hunger, the sensation that the body has begun to feed on itself and we are being sapped of our energy. This is a true craving for bread. It is to such a, a, a longing for food that Moses refers in the first reading this evening. He reminds the Israelites who are about to enter the land of promise that their ancestors knew real hunger when they were in the wilderness. Their hunger was so intense that they even pleaded to God to be allowed to return to Egypt. Though burdened there with dehumanizing servitude, at least they had food to eat. Moses also reminds them that God provided for their ancestors by sending manna from the heavens. Now scholars tell us that what the people considered to be miraculous food was probably quite common in this part of the desert. Still, the nature of this food is not the point of the story. What is important is that God provided for them in their moment of need, when the people themselves could not do so. Moses clearly states that God did this in order to show them that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. In other words, there is a hunger in each of us that only God can satisfy. The question must be asked, do we ever experience that hunger? Have we ever known a primal longing for God? I'm convinced that the craving for God is more common than perhaps we realize. I believe that the frantic search for meaning in our lives or for acceptance that consumes so much of our time as people today is at heart a search for God. Furthermore, I think that there are many people who are very much like the Jewish crowds in today's gospel they are good people who are not prepared to accept some of the claims made by Jesus regarding himself. They too are searching for God. Jesus declares in the gospel this evening, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives because his life has eternal life. This is a bold, a bold claim indeed. What were they supposed to make of it? And what do we make of it today? Our readings this evening are filled with bold claims. Moses claims that God's word is as much more a, more a need for us than food. Jesus claims that we must feed on his body and blood if we would have life. Paul claims that when we partake of the one loaf, we are intimately joined to one another. We need faith to accept these claims. 
We need faith to accept these claims. We may all experience genuine craving for fulfillment, but only faith can help us recognize what will satisfy that deepest craving of our spirit. The sequence for the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ expressed in this way. Sight has failed, nor thought conceives, but a dauntless faith believes. The body and blood of Christ, the risen one, possesses extraordinary features. When we eat bread or food, we turn it into our being. But when we consume the body and blood of Christ, we are transformed into him. A bond is forged that not only grants us life, but also endures into eternal life. And lastly, we are bound together with all others who partake of this food and drink in the mystical body of Christ. Those of us who search for meaning can, through faith, find it in the life promised with this food. Those of us who search for acceptance can find it through faith in the common sharing of one loaf. However, we must remember that in our Eucharistic celebration, this bread is a body now glorified, but that was once broken. And the drink is the blood of the risen Christ that was once poured out for our salvation. We are assured life through his death. Again, only faith can help us to understand and penetrate the mystery that this memorial of the Lord's dying is the mystery of our life. At the heart of this glorious feast of the body and blood of Christ that we celebrate today is the fundamental mystery of God's love for us, his providential love for us. We have been created with a craving for God. As St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they rest in you. While we await our final judgment, or our final fulfillment in God, we have the body of Christ and the blood of Christ to satisfy our hunger and our thirst. He is the real staple of our life. Once we realize this, we will not be satisfied with anything less. This is the patronal feast of the Blessed Sacrament priests and the congregation that serves you here at St. Joseph. We are dedicated to the Eucharist. Our founder, St. Peter Julian Amard, in the late 19th century said this, Our Lord does not want to remain on earth only through his grace, his truth, or his words. He remains in person. We possess the same Lord Jesus Christ who lived in Judea, although under a different form of life. He has put on a sacramental garment, but he does not cease being Jesus, the Son of God and the Son of Mary. We live by this wondrous food and drink. We're going to listen now to a short video from Archbishop Gustavo, part of the observance in the Archdiocese of San Antonio this weekend, is bringing to a close the three-year on the way, on delay campaign, which has been, by the grace of God and by the generosity of you and so many people, very successful. Now, let us listen for a few minutes to our Archbishop, as he shares with us a message of thanksgiving.
Well, we have worked very hard for three years, and it is time to celebrate our efforts and to show our gratitude to everyone who has contributed with funds, prayer, uh, and other means to make this campaign successful. We know that this situation about uh, pandemic crisis will not end next month. Of course not. But that should not prevent us to celebrate in creative ways the success of this great effort that took 60 years for the Archdiocese to have. We are very proud of the organization of the campaign. We are very proud of the results of the campaign. And above all, we are very grateful for your involvement, for each and every one of you in huge ways or little ways every one counts and we want to celebrate the results of the campaign with you well first of all that people throughout the archdiocese were involved and the campaign uh, has um, fostered so many fruits throughout the archdiocese it's not only the buildings or the projects themselves, it is all the effort that has led many people to interact, to feel responsible for the life of our local church in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, that they were involved in at different levels in different ways with different initiatives. That is one piece. It's wonderful to see the dynamics that the campaign created during these three years. One great fruit of the campaign that will lead us in the years to come is the sense of stewardship. Because this effort was greater than 60 years for this to happen, but we will need to continue being good stewards of the many gifts, God's gifts, that is not just finances. It's other talents and, 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 and personal gifts that they have to come through in, in, in our communities and the larger church in San Antonio. But also the ministries, because the ministries that we have and those that, thanks to the campaign, are being created will lead us to serve better the needs of the people of God in the Archdiocese, and particularly the next generation of Catholics. So it's a great future here, and we are going to take any venue to explore it. Thank you again to all and each one of you. In this parish community, there's a, a beautiful uh, painting that the Archbishop has sent to be uh, kept here at St. Joseph's. It is an expression of 
gratitude for your gifts, for your generosity, and an expression of hope for the future of our church as we continue to be fed by God's word, by each other's presence, and by the gift of the Eucharist. So let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing God's great love for all of us, we can confidently bring our needs before him. For Pope Francis, our bishop, priests, and all who serve the church, may the Lord strengthen them in their mission of bringing the light of Christ to a weary world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civic leaders and all who help formulate public policy, may the Holy Spirit guide them in all they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the success of the On the Way Andale Capital Campaign, and that the building up of our local church may bear witness to the glory of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this gathered assembly, may the love and truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all that we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have completed their pilgrimage on earth, may they find eternal joy in their heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal prayers and for the special intention of our Mass being offered for Veronica Ramirez and Fanny, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear the prayers of your people and respond with mercy and compassion. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come, the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and be united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creature, creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. Heaven and earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Peter Julian Amart, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Gustavo, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us offer each other a greeting of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. name I called the Lord who answered me from all my troubles I was set free taste
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by a reception of your precious body and blood, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of Eucharist is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.